Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the historic Orpheum Theater here in downtown Los Angeles for tonight's conversation featuring Pico Iyer and Takashi Murakami. I'm Joanne Heiler, uh, the director of the Broad Art Foundation and founding director of the Broad Museum. This is actually the sixth unprivate collection talk in the Broad series of conversations, bringing together cultural voices, leading cultural voices, and artists in the Broad collections. What a great turnout tonight. I'm glad to see you all here. Um, we're delighted to be reaching such a wide audience. Since last October, several thousand people have heard our speakers from Eli and Edie Broad themselves to cultural icons such as John Waters, Jeff Koons, and Liz Diller, founding principal of Diller Scafidio Renfro, the architects designing our museum. Speaking of our building, we look forward to opening to the public next year in 2015. We'd invite you sooner, however right now, it looks a bit like this. We only have about 50 hard hats to go around. But when we open, you'll be able to enter wearing whatever hat you wish, and general admission will be free. The museum will display many of the 200 artists collected by the Broads over almost half a century. And one artist who will be represented very well is Takashi Murakami. Takashi Murakami is often compared to Andy Warhol for the influence of his work not only within the art world, but also on popular culture. As many of you know, his super flat style has made its way into collaborations with Kanye West, Pharrell Williams, and famously with fashion house Louis Vuitton and designer Marc Jacobs. He launched a production company, Kai Kai Kiki, which among other, many other things, manages and promotes lesser known artists. A dazzling array of business as art initiatives is underpinned by his studio art practice and Takashi's deep interests, which range from 19th century Japanese painting to Buddhism, anime, and post-war social politics. And by the way, tomorrow night, as I think many of you know, he will be screening his debut feature film, Jellyfish Eyes, at the Ace Hotel Theater just down the street from here. If you haven't snagged your tickets, you should act fast and go down there to the box office. Uh, tonight, Takashi sits down with writer and cultural philosopher Pico Iyer. Pico is the author of 10 books and literally hundreds of essays that have appeared in leading magazines and journals throughout the world. His book, The Global Soul, Jet Lag, Shopping Malls in the Search for a Home, great title, was an unforgettable read for me and so many others 15 years ago. And his 2008 book, The Open Road, drawing on 34 years of talks and travels with the 14th Dalai Lama, was a bestseller published in a dozen countries. An essay of his about Murakami will appear in the catalog of the Broad Collection set to debut with our museum. Pico is one of the great literary voices of our time. He expresses both the beauty and the challenges of our increasingly interwoven world and why all that interconnectedness leads often and paradoxically to more distance, conflict, but also other unexpected places. A resident of Japan since 1987, Pico has observed the work of Murakami for many years and most recently said, he's one of the most vital and essential figures in Japan today. Uh, a detail or two I'm obliged to mention. Uh, our talk tonight extends to an online live stream audience. Audience members and online viewers are invited to tweet questions for the speaker's consideration using, using the hashtag Broad Murakami and the speakers will answer select questions at the end of the talk. And with that, it's my pleasure to welcome to the stage Takashi Murakami and Pico Iyer. Thank you. As you can see, uh, it's my job to be the straight man uh, <laughs> this evening. But thank you so much, Joanne. Um, my aim, actually, is to be as silent as possible, because this is a rare chance for all of us in LA to hear Takashi Murakami. But before I fall silent, I just wanted to almost set our conversation 
into a kind of context. Uh, as you heard, I've been based in rural Japan for 27 years, and I go back and forth between uh, Japan and California. And a few months ago, I was going to my local health club in Nara, and I squeezed into the little elevator, and I saw there were a couple of young mothers there dressed in Gucci and Dior uh, with Hello Kitty rings next to their Vuitton bags. And their kids were, of course, adorable in Captain America and Superman t-shirts, and the young fathers were wearing hip-hop kind of South Central gear from Abercrombie and Fitch, probably. And I thought, what a charming, cheerful, innocent world I've chosen to live in. And then the elevator stopped at the third floor, and a very demure-looking matron came on. And I remembered my Japanese wife had told me that this lady had actually had a mental breakdown and would sleep with any man around. And then I looked, and I saw a retired businessman in the elevator, and he characteristically was carrying a manga comic book full of wide-eyed nymphettes and triple uh, X-rated scenes of graphic violence. Uh, and then I remembered that the Tokyo Police Department presents itself to the world through a lovable little character called Pipo. And even the nuclear industry in Japan uh, represents itself through a cartoon mascot, Pluto-kun. And I went back to my apartment, and I began looking through Takashi Murakami's work, and suddenly everything fell into place, because there were the really irresistible, cute, cartoony, bright characters, but surrounded by signs of apocalypse. And there were the two-dimensional, super-flat figures that surround me, but haunted by ghosts and demons and nightmares. And there was the post-war, all-American, generic suburb we know from the novels of Haruki Murakami, but uh, shadowed by the spirits that we see in the wonderful films of Hayao Miyazaki. And suddenly I felt really as if Takashi-san's work had explained the world around me, but also all the invisible worlds around it. So, you know, all of us know that his work is very charming and troubling and easy and difficult and layered and big and fearless, but I think it's like nothing else on the planet. And certainly, for me, Japan never looks the same after looking at his work. So, Takashi-san, so happy to see you here. Hello. And I have a lot I want to ask you about your process and your vision, but I thought maybe we could start way back. What, what are your earliest memories of, of growing up in Japan? Uh, okay. Uh, so. I have to excuse about uh, you know my question and answers. Uh, some you know maybe 80 percent uh, in Japanese, and uh, 20 percent very bad English. <laughs> so, but uh, you know in a difficult moment is you know go through the you know translation you go. Uh, you, your question is a uh, memory, right? You growing up, yeah. Ah, okay. Uh, the, my mem memory was uh, linked with my peace mostly is. Uh, Exactly, the Vietnam Wars, and uh, you know Vietnam Wars TV program mm -hmm. in uh, documentary stuff in you know Japanese TV, and also the like 40 years ago, uh, very often to showing at uh, uh, exactly documentary the war stuff, mm -hmm. uh, World War II, like uh, Nazi and uh, like why so Japan was lose the war. And uh, you know many many you know war image and also the you know Cold War too, mm. like in you know, America and the Soviet Union. So a lot of stuff uh, and in a environment, in a, you know my environment, is a you know war issue because you know what my father was uh, self defense force. Mm -hmm. you know, he was working. So and also that he was geek for the you know, kind of the weapon. And my house having uh, you know a lot of the magazines about uh, you know weapons you know <laughs> stuff. That's why you know I any time to having a big question about the, what is a war because you know we lose a war. He and my father said uh, you know why we lose from the U.S. That why so that reason is he talked to me you know again and again and again. So but uh, you know my philosophy came from conversation with my father maybe. Mm. So that is, uh, you know, uh, the first uh, memory. Mm. So when I said, but at the same time, you know, uh, the kind of the, you know, the, like a sci-fi, you know, 
TV program, like uh, Ultraman or some kind of the most uh, kaiju stuff. Yeah. So that is very familiar. So because uh, at the moment was a very kind of the dark uh, kind of feeling uh, because in the Pacific Ocean having uh, you know, several uh, atomic bomb experiment mm -hmm. and the Japanese people very fear about the effect in uh, you know, kind of the radiation stuff because my mom said, you know, so please be careful when the rain is coming so you have to escape from the you know, rain because of the radiation. So kind of that feeling was, you know, we're from the kaiju movie a lot in Japan, that environment, I think. So I, my memory was something like that. And your mother actually grew up in Kukura, which is the town where the atom bomb was going to be dropped before they chose Nagasaki. Is that yes, right? yeah. So she, she was talking with me about uh, this story. Yeah. So if uh, the, the Kokura city was not crowded, yeah. so maybe you are not here. So kind of the, you know. She, she saw the bomb. Uh, she said, you know, Nagasaki atomic bomb, maybe she saw the kind of the rainbow color yeah. in, uh, you know, skylight. Yeah. A very, very curious color, like not rainbow, but uh, kind of the orange plus, you know, very never seen the, the landscape, she said. And then were you also absorbing a lot of American stuff when you were a kid? Uh, yes, you know, many, many TV program in, uh, I don't know in uh, English, you know, title, yeah. but uh, you know, many kind of family movie. Cartoons? Uh, uh, yes, cartoons is every day. Yeah. And also the Lassie. Lassie? Yeah, yeah. and, uh, <laughs> and uh, kind of the dolphin something, like a dolphin stuff. What's, uh, what's the title? Yeah, dolphin. Uh, kind of flipper. Flip, flipper, yeah. 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 <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so, kind of that, you know, very yeah. you know, popular. Yeah. So I, I was a very big fan. Did, did you, you know, I've seen your movie, and I was interested in the little boy in the, mov in the movie. Did you spend a lot of time by yourself as a kid? Uh, the sh uh, that means the watching the kind of jellyfish that? eyes. I think. Mm. Mm. Uh, no. So <laughs> 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 it's you know because then I have a bro young brother and yeah. uh, I have uh, many friends. Uh -huh. And also the, <laughs> why, why laughing? <laughs> and uh, also the, the, my neighborhood was a kind of rice farm. Mm -hmm. So that means that we can fishing and, uh, you know, kind of catching for the, the lobster or something. Mm -hmm. So, you know, my, you know, kids time was very, very, you know, happy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with uh, nature. And then when you went to college, you decided to study the most traditional mm. side of Japanese yes. art, isn't that right? Yeah. Um, and you, you, did, you got a doctorate in, what was the subject of your study? Uh, why I have to go to the Japanese traditional painting the department? Mm -hmm. The reason was, you know, when I was getting a very big influence, the movies, like, you know, Steven Spielberg and the George Lucas and Hayao Miyazaki stuff. And then the, my dream was, you know, I want to go into the, the kind of animation industry mm -hmm. and uh, making, a, you know, if I can make a good drawing, you know, uh, drawing. So immediately I, I want to go, but, you know, I have no skill. So that's why I have to, I thought I have to training about some making a drawing and painting. So, and then, but uh, when I choose a department, design, then the oil paint, and the, you know, many department, but uh, no fit because it looks like really complex. <laughs> so the Japanese traditional, you know, painting department was uh, just, you know, sketching, like uh, a pole and uh, like kind of the, you know, landscape. So that's why, okay, so when I will go to this department, uh, good training for the drawing, that's why I choose. Easier. Yes, <laughs> but I, you know, I lose uh, two years, and uh, you know, uh, th that was difficult. 
And I think I heard that when you were a student, somebody said you weren't so good with color, so you decided really to work hard on color or something like that? I don't know. Mm. Oh, yeah, you might know. <laughs> yes, that, that memory was, you know, you know, almost every day I remember because, you know, that lady, yeah. the, this lady's boyfriend is, you know, very handsome. And also, the, you know, he, his, you know, color sense is very good. So everybody understanding, everybody. Yeah. And then, you know, uh, that this, you know, this lady want to be say, you know, kind of the, you know, my boyfriend is very good, you know, color sense. <laughs> and then, you know, why, so she come to behind me and, oh, your color sense is so bad. <laughs> you know, looks like, you know, brown color and black and white is, you know, stupid. <laughs> so, and then, you know, but, uh, you know, I, I came, why? So I came to the universities, I want to make a training. So, because I have no skill, that's why. So, but uh, I, you know, I cannot say, you know, for her. So, and uh, that was a very big complex still now. <laughs> so, that's why, you know, you see the, the Louis Vuitton multicolor monogram. That is a kind of, you know, myself, the parody. Like, you know, I can use it for the multicolor, you know, stuff. Yeah. That is, uh, you know, I can use, but at uh, the same time, you know, have no sense for the color, so kind of that. I hope she's seen your more recent paintings. <laughs> uh, I don't know. So she, uh, the, this guy is in a professor in a university mm. and uh, getting married. Maybe yeah, she still have a you know, proud of him. <laughs> I don't know. And then I think in 1988 you went to New York to see Anselm Kiefer exhibition at MoMA. How did being in this country change the way you looked at Japan? Or change you? I think, uh, you know, uh, no different uh, the change for the when I watching at the Japan. Mm. Different thing is uh, the, you know, you know, what is the art I understood? Yeah. So, because, you know, contemporary art is what is uh, my big question. So, because in Japan, uh, contemporary art is just came from the West and, uh, you know, misinterpretation in the magazine. Yeah. So, now I understood and still now misinterpretation. Yeah. So, yeah. but, uh, you know, that's why many things is unlogic. So, and then why I was very interested in the Kiefer stuff was some artists was, you know, copying for the Anselm Kiefer. Mm. So, very good to copying. So, and then I, when I was first shocked to the contemporary art was his, his you know, exhibition. Mm. So, and then uh, I found the Kiefer's, you know, uh, image in the magazine. I misunderstood you know, this Japanese artist, you know, the image I saw, yeah. but uh, this is not, uh, you know, this is not his work. And then I found the uh, you know, name of the artist, and you know, it, at the moment was you know, in uh, MoMA having a Kiva show. Mm. Okay, so I have to go and I have to see the real piece. And then I saw the Kiva stuff as you know, I was crying. I don't know why. Like because you know, kind of gigantic, kind of the pyramid painting was uh, all by my scale, you know, all by my image. Yeah. So that's why I was, you know, you know, big tear. Looks like you know, really you know, embarrassing. Like it looks like you know, over 15 minutes standing behind uh, this pyramid painting. Yeah. Maybe you know, I was drunk myself. <laughs> so, but you know, I still really respect and I love the Kiefer stuff. Yeah. So because a political issue and uh, you know his kind of scale of thing is my favorite. But uh, at the moment was you know I don't know why. So and also the same time I saw the the Jeff Koons show mm. in uh, Sona Bento Gallery. Mm. So and but uh, I couldn't understand it for the, what is uh, this porcelain stuff like a uh, Michael Jackson <laughs> and uh, Pink Panther stuff. And, uh, you know, super confusing. Yeah. But uh, Sonabend Gallery is, you know, 
famous gallery I, I understood. Yeah. So I have to looking at uh, what's the reason why so this artist you know showing that there yeah. because uh, Jeff Koon's name I you know I mentioned uh, because you know he was making a uh, basketball stuff mm. but uh, so much far away that that piece was so the first my uh, experience in New York City in the art world is uh, you know completely uh, you know mystery everything it's just you know you know huge scale and uh, you know really stupid piece and uh, you know cannot understanding and the gallery in the Soho is uh, you know cannot see everything like uh, you know 200 300 galleries you know my brain was you know explosion like you know <laughs> it is I cannot come to this world, so almost give up. That is my impression, first time. <laughs> yes. So did it, but it sounds like it confirmed your idea that you could make big pieces, or you could do something quite Yeah, that, that's why, you know, I, uh, I, I have an uh, obsessive for the making a big piece, yeah. so because uh, that, that uh, first big shock for, for me, yeah. Julian Schnabel style, and uh, you know, and a keeper, and uh, you know, many, many artists at the moment was having uh, big pieces, yeah. and I was very you know, inspired. So still until now. And I feel your big pieces are almost a way of saying something very direct to Japan about what it's not doing. Do you, do you feel that you're talking to your society through your art? Or? Mm -hmm. で、その、あの、日本に向かって、あの、何か足りないものがあると言ったら受けてると思うんですけれども、自分のその日本の社会に対して語りかけてると思いますか? Uh, I don't know. The, the, because why say I I I can say but I don't know because uh, I I'm very big fan in uh, Hayao Miyazaki's film. Yeah. So he was uh, kind of the he his Politically, statement is a uh, kind of the communist he was, yeah. and uh, exactly left wing, yeah. and uh, he was maybe in the 80s gave up, and then his career was started. So that mean that's why his storyline is very you know wavy, mm -hmm. and uh, you know not happy end anytime, but looks like happy end. <laughs> kind of you know the environment I really understanding. So that's why so my piece is, uh, you know, when I'm making uh, my concept and, uh, you know, narrative point is I want to, you know, making a uh, very honest, yeah. you know, honestly to say something. So that's why, you know, my statement is, you know, what is uh, myself and the Japanese people, how confusing the, you know, conf like not, not statement, like, you know, straight away. Just you know, open the very very confusing you know, landscape, and maybe lost or lost the confidence after the war. It seems the Jap Japanese culture. But uh, you know, the, honestly, the Japanese young people having uh, you know strange confidence. Like you know, uh, I don't understanding for the where from the disconfidence, yeah. and also the you know, maybe so my generation also. The same same thing. Mm. That's why you know my standing position in Japan is very bad. Like you know, oh Takashi is you know s you know selling for the Japanese kind of the you know shadow stuff too much yeah. to say you know West and the Western people you know laughing at that you know the the Takashi's piece. Very you know bad example is a masturbation guy. So this is not true. Like this is uh, you know. Too much operation for the you know bad you know bad form, mm. but uh, you know when I see when you know Western people came to Japan they're watching at a convenience store can see the you know kind of pornographic man right. you know, manga stuff yeah. a lot, yeah. so not you know kind of the photograph like manga, yeah. <laughs> so that is really strange, <laughs> and uh, also the you know almost. Uh, the you know can get the sexuality came from not real, kind of the imagination came from the manga and the illustration. It, this is much you know big influence. So that culture is you know my background. 
So that's why you know I have to making myself to you know uh, make how can I say uh, Western contemporary art do you know how can I say I know Gendai Beats no rule de so you koto kataro to suru to ma ai fu nat jatte Nihon no kage no bubun bakkari o katari o natte fushimatte rukedo sore ga kekko shoujiki na toko da to omotte ru. So when I try to talk about all that through the contemporary art lang uh, language and grammar, uh, it turns into, you know, as if, uh, it looks like as if I'm only talking about the, the shadowy part of the society, but that's what I'm trying to portray. So do you, do you feel your art is misinterpreted maybe more in Japan than here? Oh, uh, I, I, uh, I don't know. But uh, the Japanese people having, a, I said, confidence so that means that we don't, we don't need to the Western something. Yeah. Kind of that we can create ourselves. Mm. But uh, this is not true, but uh, kind of this you know, misunderstood yeah. is uh, like now the Japanese culture yeah. having a you know, very strange wave, I think. Yeah. You understand, right? Kind yeah, yeah because I live in Japan, yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of, that's why the Haruki Murakami is you know, very popular. And same time, you know, the kind of the highest level, the culture people hate him. Yes. So that's, you know, kind of the complex is uh, any time to, you know, having uh, our culture. But Hayao Miyazaki, whom you admire so much, is an interesting example because he's so deeply Japanese mm. and he's summoning all the old Japanese spirits, the kamisama. Mm. But his, his films translate to every culture in the world. He's so universally popular, isn't he? Mm. But uh, you know his standing position is pretty good because uh, you know animation culture itself is uh, very fit with uh, our culture. Right, yeah. So that's why now I, my project is uh, you know making uh, exact animation stuff yeah. like kind of the Japanese animation style. style. Yes. So and uh, this is try to you know how understanding each other you know Japanese you know audience and me. So this is big trial. Oh, I think one thing that people don't understand when they see your work is how much time and effort has gone into it. I think sometimes you spend 10 years on one piece. And I, want, I wonder if you want to show us um, a work and tell us about your process and how much Okay, so went the into it. Over? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So That's our huts? Yes. Yeah. I don't know. This is a process. This is a process. Okay. Yeah, so this is a recent one from a, a few years. Ahats is after the Fukushima yes. nuclear Yes, but uh, this is a 100 meter painting. Yeah. So, but uh, when I was created, like, looks like in eight months is pretty short time. So, but because I don't know that I have a tension. So, and also the, you know, I want to making a challenge for the- A challenge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. I don't know what's the challenge, but uh, you know, 100 meter painting is, you know, I never thinking about that. And uh, when I, you know, one, one day I got that idea, 100 meter, 100 meter painting is uh, pretty, you know, uh, unusual. So that's why, okay, so this is a goal. That, that, this is a concept. Yeah. And then 500 Arahat is, uh, you know, after that, I'm looking for the, what is, uh, you know, the, you know, content. Uh, concept is good fit for this uh, very very long painting, and then I found it's, it is, and I I, I employ for the I uh, employ for the art university student mm -hmm. mostly the Nihonga kind of the Japanese traditional painting school, uh, the department people, so and then you know copying for the many many Japanese traditional paintings you know shape. And then uh, I was uh, kind of the patchwork, so m many different uh, the images. And finally, you know, and also the few artists, few students, uh, are very good at uh, making a drawing. So these people finally go to the animation industry. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> and, uh, now he's a very famous okay. animator. But uh, that people was pretty good drawings. So, and then I choose a, you know, good piece and I cutting for the, you know, the, this shape and the, the kind of the patchwork stuff. But, uh, you know, uh, 
I couldn't sleep like you know three four months. Like kind of <laughs> that's why the very nervous you know cannot you know can make in a timeline or not <laughs> and the budget thing and you know, I have to build for the new big the studio also same time so many things is a you know, big struggle. And probably it's a lot of stress to have so many people working there. Yes, yes. And also the, at the moment, uh, working with me, the student, after, you know, after finished up this painting, you know, over, you know, 95% is gone. Like, you know, Takashi, fuck you. Like, kind of, <laughs> you know, kind of, I understand, I understand. Yeah. Like, you know, thank you so much and fuck you too, right? <laughs> so kind of, you know, very, you know, kind of uh, like bad mood, you know. You know, uh, it's, you know, it, this is an artist battle, right? So when I was a student, you know, go to the, some many part-time job, but, I, you know, I never say, fuck you, but, uh, <laughs> you know, kind of, okay, so when I get the success, you know, like, you know, this is not my job or something like that, but, uh, you know, Big big stress, you know. I can give to them, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> they got. <laughs> I think. And I get the sense your vision has changed a lot since the earthquake and tsunami and the yes. Fukushima. Yeah, 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 yeah. It seems like you're much more sympathetic, or like your art is more about healing than mm. confronting now. Yeah. Yeah. Is that true? Uh, yes, because uh, my career was, you know, almost learning in the process, in a, what is a contemporary art. Mm. So sometimes uh, exactly in a history, came from the history, and sometimes is uh, uh, because in the uh, 90s, uh, the art world was go into the, you know, kind of the money game, like, uh, you know, what is a capitalism? So that was uh, my theme. But, uh, you know, after the earthquake was, you know, I, my idea came, uh, came back to the, when I was kids, the, that feeling, like, you know, very big fear about the you know, environment, like, uh, you know, radiation stuff and uh, kind of the, you know, catastrophe. Mm. So we still have a big possibility to the big earthquake in uh, Tokyo. Yes. So that's why, okay, so one day to come the big earthquake and also the you know, huge catastrophe in, uh, you know, my neighborhood. So how, and then I got, uh, you know, and I understood we are from the religion, because, you know, I have no religion, so uh, still now. But, uh, you know, I go to the kind of the Shinto, you know, the kind of temple, and, yeah. uh, you know, New Year's, Happy New Year, yes. I, I, I do. But, uh, you know, kind of uh, my religion, the, feeling is uh, Hayao Miyazaki's movie. Like, I believe nature or came from the space something, and, you know, I believe the UFO or something like that. So this is my religion, because, you know, Steven Spielberg's movie is almost religion, like, uh, you know, Arian's movie, right? Yeah. So I believe him. But uh, <laughs> so at the same time, uh, you know, my uh, kind of the complex is, you know, why uh, Japanese culture was destroyed, everything, after World War II. So, uh, uh, same time, the religion is, uh, you know, almost destroying. Right. So, but uh, after the earthquake, so I super understanding for the, okay, that the moment, so people want to be, you know, getting some story. Yeah. So, story is very important. Mm -hmm. What is a story is, you know, kind of making a dream, and uh, making a future, so we can create the future. So, but it is not true. So, but uh, we need a story. So that is a religion. I saw. That's why you know I took the idea the 500 monks, the Alahat. Yeah. That is uh, why I choose that this theme is uh, 500 Alahat is uh, you know. Japanese religious uh, created because came from the China, the the number of the the uh, Alahat was uh, how many pieces? Hundred hundred eight people. Yeah. 
So that is uh, uh, the true stuff. But uh, when uh, import, imported to Japan, and uh, time to time to, you know, uh, using for the, this storyline, so people created for the another 400. So that is, uh, I think, a transculture, you know, reality. So, and uh, this painting is, you know, first uh, we understood uh, first time to showing at uh, Katao, mm. so in, in uh, Doha city, the big, big uh, museum. Uh, Katao, Katao also the, you know, part of the Asia, but uh, we don't know each other, you know, very much. We get the, the oil and the gas from the, this country very much. But, uh, you know, we misunderstood still kind of the, you know, culture distance. That's why, you know, 500 monks and Alahat is a very good example to want to be communication, but still, you know, far away yeah. the, in the culture. Because when you go to a temple in Kyoto, there's a version of this. You often see the 13 Arhats mm. in, in a classic Kyoto temple, don't you? So you're taking, again, something deeply traditional, but putting it in a new direction. Yes, yeah, yeah. At the moment was, yes, uh, the, I forgot, the uh, Kano someone. <laughs> it's a big show in uh, 500 uh, Arahat painting show in Tokyo. Mm. But uh, that was the uh, same time, the earthquake you know, moment. That means the opening was delayed for the two months. So that, that is a very good timing for I watched uh, this yeah. show. Yeah. So. Also, I've heard a lot of people in Japan talking about ghosts mm. after Fukushima, and there's even a Buddhist priest in the Fukushima area who's helping people get ghosts out of their system. Really? And, yes, and I feel that ghosts are important too. Oh, please, you know, talking about this thing. I want to, I, I never heard that. A lot, a, a lot of people lost their minds just before the event and mm. after, and they're wandering around surrounded by their ancestors mm. who, who are gone or half gone or they don't know, mm. but suddenly the priests have found what you're saying, which is there's a, the need for some medicine. Mm. Uh, and people have lost even more a sense of reality and where they, whether they're living or dead. Mm. And, and also the, the spirits that we see in the Miyazaki films that are inside the trees and the forest kind of coming up into the people more mm. since, since that maybe. Yes, I understand. Like your mother said about the rain when you were small, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Mm. full of other things. Now, if, if, if making a 100-meter painting is a lot of stress, mm. making a movie must be even more. And that yes, very much, very <laughs> much, because I cannot control myself. <laughs> so the movie industry people is completely different. Yeah. So that's why the communication grammar is, you know, still in the process. Mm. So, you know, but because, you know, my way is, you know, why the, my assistant was thinking, you know, Fakyu Takashi, because, you know, I said, you know, just my job is say no, you know, not say yes, <laughs> like a no, 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 yeah. every day, yeah. you know, and finally to, you know, finish up the painting. So, and, uh, you know, assistant want, you know, want to be say thank you so much, but uh, I have a big stress because this is not my piece. So kind of my, you know, process is, very, you know, painful, maybe. Yeah. So, and the uh, movie, you know, experience is the same thing. Like, you know, I, I did the, you know, each cut and uh, each process, music and uh, after recording and editing, mm. you know, I was, you know, doing for the 100%, but uh, cannot success, uh, cannot, you know, satisfy. Yeah. So that's why, you know, uh, I cannot say, you know, oh, this is great, you know, just, you know, okay. That, uh, you know, reaction is pretty cold. So that means uh, very difficult communication, they think. <laughs> and uh, I'm also <laughs> thinking about that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm very enjoying because this is my dream. And also, so I was very remember uh, about uh, when I see at the movie, the Soviet Union, the movie director, Tarkovsky. Yeah. So he was making uh, the stoker. You know the Stoker mm -hmm. movie? Yeah, yeah. So that is, uh, you know, the storyline is, uh, you know, traveling for the zone. Yeah. The zone is uh, exactly, you know, Soviet Union was having a big experiment for the atomic bomb. Mm -hmm. 
uh, then at the, mo at the you know, pace was very dangerous. Mm. So and then Tarkovsky making a storyline mm. to, you know, don't want to say to attack for the government, you know, but uh, in a storyline, this is, uh, you know, the people very dangerous and the mutation, you know, but at the same time, very dangerous and a very logical politics, you know, political situation can make a very beautiful story. Mm -hmm. That is a, you know, mi you know myster mysterious thing is, a, and also the people, you know, can believe what is, a, you know, creative from the, you know, people, human being. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, I think, uh, you know, I was, I'd been over 10 years try to making a storyline to make the animation, but I couldn't. But after Fukushima stuff is immediately, you know, can make, you know, link with uh, this you know, kind of the very, you know, like, uh, you know, hidden the story in uh, politics. Mm -hmm. So that's why, you know, I can making a, you know, movie right now, so. And the, did you see Tarkovsky's movie, The Sacrifice? Yeah, no. Oh, <laughs> Sorry. I hope you can, because that has a, an event very similar to Fukushima, sudden big shock. Okay. Everybody's life has changed. Oh, okay. But so you were saying it's, it was your dream for a long time to make a movie. Yes. Ever since you were a kid? Or? No, no. Oh, it's when I was seeing, watching the movies, uh, you know, uh, the very famous animation movie, uh, Galaxy Express 39 was, you know, kind of a child, uh, children's movie. So, but I was, you know, when I was uh, high school kids was, you know, I was crying, you know, very much. And uh, I went to the uh, movie theater like 10 times. I don't know why. So, but, uh, you know, and same time, uh, Hayao Miyazaki debut at, for the, you know, the, uh, in a TV program. And I was super inspiration from the, these, you know, two titles, like, uh, I don't know, in the English, like a Conan or something, like a Hayao Miyazaki making a, the animation TV program was super nice. Mm. And then, you know, okay, so I want to go into the, you know, this industry, but, you know, right now, I, just now I could, you know, making a very small movie, but, uh, you know, that, that is a dream. And also the still now very, you know, super difficult operation. But what does a movie allow you to do that you can't do in painting, apart from telling a story? Uh, the painting is uh, completely follows the Western contemporary art rule. It's kind of, I looks like kind of the tennis and uh, you know golf and uh, football and the baseball, something like that. Like uh, contemporary art having uh, you know very strong rule. So that's why I follow the rule. So that, that is, uh, you know, uh, the, my feeling. Mm. Making a painting, a sculpture. Looks like Japanese, using a Japanese cute culture, but uh, still in a rule. Mm. So. But with the movies, you're making your own rules? I, you know, I want to, looking at, uh, you know, movie's grammar and the rule. Yeah. So because, you know, when I see at a Godzilla new movie, was great. So, but uh, the, this movie, what is a uh, great stuff is uh, can combine with a Japanese kaiju movie and the Hollywood style of the scenario, you know, grammar. Mm -hmm. So that is, uh, you know, one of the, my goal, but I didn't understand it for the, you know, Hollywood grammar. Mm -hmm. So I want to understand it too, very much. Because you put all this work into making jellyfish eyes, which mm -hmm. some of us will see tomorrow, but I think you already, in post-production of Jellyfish Eyes 2, yes. and then you're planning a third one soon. Yeah. So this is going to take up a lot of your time for the next few years. Yes, very much, <laughs> right? Kind of seven days, like uh, three days, four days making a painting and sculpture, and uh, you know, another three, four days is uh, making a movie, kind of 50-50 uh -huh. right now. You're doing them at the same time? Uh, yes, almost same time. In a, a day, in a noon time, having a meeting, and at night time and the early morning is making a painting, yeah. something like that. So this confirms what I heard about you, which is you never sleep. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> you saw that, you know, downstairs. <laughs> I slept. <laughs> right? Five minutes, maybe. <laughs> yeah, no, no. 
Because you, you were on a plane coming from Tokyo last night, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. I, 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 would be I like couldn't a ghost That's why I slept, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Big jet lag, I know. So, so, where you shoot the movie is not so far from your studio in Tokyo? Or is oh, yes. Uh, 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 looks like uh, very close to the Fukushima area. Mm. So because uh, right now the area is uh, very popular in a shooting a film because you know people escape and uh, you know government want to be pushing for the promotion. Mm. So that is uh, very helpful for the you know uh, kind of the you know lo location hunting. You're giving them jobs, giving them money. Oh, uh, looks kind of the good reputation for the the site. Yeah. So but. Uh, same time, I'm very fear about the, ra about the radiation effect. <laughs> so, yeah. like a breathing. Oh, this is you know very close to the you know Fukushima stuff. But uh, you know, like now, so the you know maybe so this you know the talk show is you know kind of the you stream or some like live live stream, right? Yeah. So Japanese people, you know, thinking about the, you know oh, the shit Takashi. You know, you have to stop to the, this issue because now is a big uh, kind of the. Nandaro, ano, ima sugoi koga dai natte no ga oishinbo っていうグルメの漫画で福島に取材に行ったら話が出たっていうシーンがものすごい話題になっていて、そういうことを書くとあの福島にとってすごく悪い印象があるのでっていうので、安倍総理までが発言し始めているような状況なので、福島のことはやっぱりその。結構ソ連の頃にあのタルコフスキーが作った映画のような本当ゾーン化していてあのタブーになってるんですよね。So um, you know one thing that it's、um, becoming a, a, it's been talked about a lot is one of the mangas、uh, well known mangas called Oishinbo. It's about the gourmet、um, eating and cooking. And in the manga, there was an episode where、uh, someone goes to Fukushima area to for for reporting. And、um, he gets a, a nose bleeding, and that was really bashed as uh, treating, uh, portraying Fukushima badly at a time that is very hard.、Um, so there was a lot of backlash, and even、um, you know the, the Prime Minister Abe came in to criticize it. So、um, there's a there's this atmosphere where、um, you know people think you're not supposed to talk badly about Fukushima. You shouldn't、mm. shouldn't bring that up. Um, and it's kind of like Fukushima is the Takoski's zone. Yes. Yeah. But、uh, you know,、uh, I'm artist. You know, I have no kind of responsibility about the politics, so I can <laughs> making a、uh, you know. But because you know, this is not you know politics. This this is just you know、uh, touching with、uh, the childhood、uh, the, for the children because I was get the、uh, feeling what is a war. So and、uh, my father explained about the、uh, you know the war history.、Mm. So that was a really good、uh, example, I think.、Yeah. And actually, you've used the word politics quite a lot tonight. So I get the sense that part of what you're trying to do is show people reality that we can't hide. あの今政治的っていう言葉を何度か使われましたけれども今日のトークで、あの村上さんはその見る人に現実を見せようとしているように思うんですけれど、どうですか？ Uh, when I was,、uh, you know, 26, 27, at the moment was、uh, Soviet Union, the Chernobyl was,、uh, you know, explosion, and、uh, at that moment was I was, you know, you know,、uh, active for the, you know, political something like、uh, kind of the, you know, go to the the conference and.、Uh, Kind of the field work, two years, and、uh, no change. Cannot you know making a changement in、uh, my way in、uh, you know kind of the politics、uh, activating, so as not succeed. That's why I gave up myself. So and then at the moment I decided, okay, so my standing position is、uh, gave up and step back from the reality, and then I can making a. Just my job is kind of the you know art piece and the kind of the you know fantasy stuff because when I see at the Goya drawing and painting, so kind of Spanish you know army was you know killing for the people, 
uh, we understanding for the in the history the reality. But uh, at the moment was you know he cannot do the he cannot do anything in the reality. So just reporting. Yeah. So that is uh, I thought my job is you know this is yeah. so. I say you know some kind of a political issue, but uh, you know, same time I you know already give up right. about the you know kind of the access with the reality. And I think one thing that you've worked very hard on is trying to encourage an art atmosphere in Japan. You've you've in, you're working with a lot of younger artists, Chiho Aoshima and Mister and others. You have a Geisai art fair. Mm -hmm. And maybe your sense was that there wasn't enough interest in the arts in Japan when you were growing up, say, or? Oh, uh, the case I was, I'd been like 13 years. So first two years, three years was good. Mm. You know, uh, came from the good artists. Already, you know, uh, established artists uh, was, came from the case I, but uh, recently is almost, you know, tired. So because, uh, you know, I couldn't, link with uh, kind of the young generation people, maybe. Like, because social networking, mm. you know, can produce, can release for the public immediately. Mm. So the, my guess is, you know, pay for the $200, and then, you know, showing at a small space, and not, you know, complete white cube. So, and then, you know, jury is coming, and a short time, like, uh, you know, 30 seconds, one minute, to watching and uh, who is uh, you know best one? This is stupid. Uh, maybe in uh, young people. Right. So, but uh, I was you know I was when I was debut was you know uh, kind of the the art event. Uh, the Belgium the curator Young Food. The he came to Japan and uh, one of the gallery the gallery museum the Watarium was you know making an event for the you know kind of the competition so young food choosing for the several artists but uh, 100 100 people 100 100 artists bring for the one you know place and uh, he was choosing and uh, he chose my piece and then i can debut for that that's why i think you know i if i can making a you know give to the young people to the chance mm. for the debut so that's why I started, but uh, you know, I don't know now. <laughs> but you know, honestly, myself, I still really enjoying because you know, any time to I can find out that new idea came from the young people. Mm -hmm. So that event is, you know, sometime you know, okay, so this year is you know stopping and you know, never do that. But uh, you know, sometime okay, but you know. In a continuing, maybe having a, a little bit future. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> when you were saying about how you found yourself crying when you were looking at the Ansam Kiefer piece, and then I think you were crying watching the Miyazaki on TV. Mm. Um, do people cry when they see your work, or do you want them to be shocked or angry or happy? Or do you have exactly Japanese people is angry? So I angry know. at your yeah. work. <laughs> I knew very much. <laughs> So, but uh, you know, I don't know that you know behind my piece is crying the people. Mm. So, but uh, you know, when I see the, my movie, every time I crying myself. <laughs> so this is really you know embarrassing. But uh, honestly, I was crying because you know the young boy, the yeah. actor is you know very good acting for the crying. Yeah. That part is you know I followed this guy. <laughs> Oh, this is great! <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> because you know, when I see at the documentary about the Julian Schnabel, you know, yeah. he was you know, he created the movie, and that, that you know making a, the you know documentary was, he was crying, you know, in a mm -hmm. shooting a film, mm -hmm. and uh, exactly you know serious crying. Oh, <laughs> this is great! You know, God, this is great! Oh my God, this is you know, great! And uh, I watched this documentary. Is, what the hell? Like, you know, <laughs> he, he has, uh, you know, too much kind of, you know, like big confidence for himself. But, you know, now he's a, <laughs> I am, you know, stupid guy. <laughs> <laughs> and that same boy is acting in the next yes, movie. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. But, uh, you know, he was 10 years old. Now, and at part two, I was shooting at the 12 and the 13 years old. That means uh, 
change the voice mm. and uh, change the face, everything will change. Yeah. So cannot keep the childhood. Looks like you know how you know change for the adult. That is uh, you know in the storyline also yeah. you know follow that. It's a complicated story. You wrote every every part of it yourself. You wrote all the dialogue and uh, yes and no. So <laughs> kind of yes mean you know. Uh, main storyline I yeah. created and uh, give to the scenario writer and uh, you know kind of the director so and uh, I told you about uh, you know my job is say no so many many the scenario writer and many you know the kind of the in image border you know I say no 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 and the thousand thousand pieces is say no and you know few good pieces and then we choose, uh, you know, this is a good piece, this is a good piece. And then can making a, can make an editing for the good pieces, you know. And then we can making a, you know, shape for the movie. Mm. Part two was, you know, very, very complex process. Like uh, I employee for the, you know, five directors. And, uh, and I employee for the, you know, several editor. And the scenario writer was four people. So kind of change, change, change. And then I did, uh, you know, uh, two months ago, I did, uh, you know, whole scenario. So, but, uh, you know, already finished up the shooting, uh, you know, live action. Mm. So after that is uh, I have to making a post-production and a CGI. Yeah. So. so editing is one of the hardest parts of the process for you? Oh, uh, no. So because not mine, my job, like, you know, editor's <laughs> job. I, my job is say no. So, <laughs> so kind of, you know, very painful process. You know, I want to make a happy face. Oh, this is great, you know. Yeah. So, but this is a few moments. So, and, uh, you know, conversation is pretty hard. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, you know, honestly, the, my newest short film, like a Farrell Williams, the, mm. you know, featuring by the Jerry Fisher's the theme song. So that short film was a pretty nice process because I have, uh, I'd been four years, so my, our, the computer graphic uh, uh, design studio in Hokkaido, like I employ for the 50 people. And uh, three years, you know, just say no. But uh, this time is, you know, you know, first, first shot is I, I can smiling, you know. Yeah. Oh, this is great, this is great, you know, because you know, this crew is very patient for the, you know, kind of three years, over three years, and uh, he got, uh, you know, learning for the, my grammar maybe, and also the, he got a good skill. That's why, you know, uh, first time to good communication with the people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's good because in this country, just say no is associated with politics, but you've managed to get it into the arts as <laughs> a reigning principle. And it's interesting because I'm also guessing when you're making films, it's important for you to be spontaneous. And Japan can be quite a rigid society. Mm. So probably you have to teach your colleagues how to act differently from the way they normally do. Oh, no, that's uh, this, this is really good point. Like, uh, Japanese people doesn't like uh, inspiration. Kind of the, you know, everybody have to follow that, mm. the, you know, mm. one grammar. Yeah. So my style of thing is say no is, uh, you know, kind of getting a new idea. <laughs> I want to try, yeah. you know, the new idea. So, yes, very difficult situation. But, uh, you know, uh, I was, I'd been, you know, many, many people working with uh, this movie series. So now we almost, you know, are choosing for the good people. Yeah. And then maybe in the near future is, you know, much more good shape, I think. Do you think Jap Japan itself is changing? Is I don't know. So kind of, you know, I don't know. It's uh, very negative. But, uh, you know, when, you know, American people, you know, asking about the same thing, you know, America has changed, uh -huh. and the culture people say, uh, you know, cannot say yes, right? So kind of really, you know, complex. Yeah. But, uh, you know, 
I hope, you know, much better, but, uh, you know, not, not link with uh, Tokyo Olympic stuff. <laughs> so <laughs> Tokyo Olympic was you know, horrible, you know. It's crazy. But maybe linked with becoming more international. Do you think Japan ought to be more part of the larger world? あの、なんで僕がスティーピットって言ったかというと、やっぱり日本はすごい土建国家で、土建業で経済を回しているので、その土建業を活性化することは日本を再生する唯一のテーマだっていうのはよくわかるんですけど、それをやると結局汚職や
So it's been three years, over three years, and now sort of that kind of uh, thing is coming into fruition in Fukushima. Thank you. No, no, thank you so much. Yes. <laughs> so I think we have maybe just three or four more. Um, what do you think of artists using anonymous personas like Banksy? ドキュメントがバンクシーみたいにこう人に無名とか自分の名前を名乗らないで活動するアーティストっていうのはどう思いますか。ああ、いや、this <笑> <laughs> this question will make you happier then. Where can I buy your hat? <laughs> <laughs> this production course is, uh, you know, uh, kind of uh, uh, thousand, over thousand dollar <laughs> production cost. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the kind of very small manufacturer, you know, kind of that making for the uh, 75 years old guy, <laughs> you know, made by hand. Like um, one week. Limited yeah. edition. Yeah, like, you know, I present for the Pharaoh, one piece, and I have <laughs> two. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what is your advice for youth who want to enter the art world? Uh, <laughs> 僕らの時代よりももう若いアーティストが入ってきてすぐお金を得れるようになってきていて多分その 非常にあの、単名で終わっちゃうんじゃないかなって、まあ、それはまあ僕らも同じなんですけどね。あの、なのでまあ僕的にはアドバイスというか前よりは全然すごくこう簡単にというか難しくなく業界に入ってくることができると
Takashi-san is going to be screening jellyfish eyes. And I want to thank you all very much for coming, but especially thank you for flying all the way from Tokyo to share yourself with us. No, no, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Can I promote one please, thing? Please, please. <laughs> this is, uh, you know, kind of the, you know, tomorrow's, uh, what's that? Special seat? Pre premium ticket. Premium ticket <laughs> is uh, super expensive, like $300. It's stupid, <laughs> sorry. But uh, this is a uh, 300 edition of my sculpture. This is uh, kind of the digital printout stuff I created in Japan. So the premium ticket is, you know, you know, present for the, this sculpture, you know, each people. And, and the uh, pamphlet. Oh, uh, what? And the pamphlet. Oh, yeah, yeah, and pamphlet. And uh, we have, uh, you know, like, uh, we have uh, another 30 pieces and a seat. If you, you can, you know, interested, please, you know, <laughs> getting at this ticket. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you again so much. Thank See you, you tomorrow night. Thank you. Thank you.